everyone and welcome back to this next session which is on rhinitis. So we are going to study different forms of rhinitis from allergic rhinitis to atrophic rhinitis, non-allergic rhinitis, drug induced rhinitis and rhinitis medicamentosa, rhinitis sicca and rhinitis caseosa. So different forms of rhinitis I am going to explain in this class. So let's begin our class with allergic rhinitis. So what do we understand by allergy? It's a very common thing that could happen to anyone. So allergy basically is a hypersensitive reaction. And what is hypersensitivity mediated by? It is mediated by immunoglobulin E. So hypersensitivity is a IgE mediated disease. So what happens in this allergy? Whenever you're exposed to an allergen, this allergen is taken up by dendritic cells. These dendritic cells exposed or are taken up by the T cells. The T cells proliferate into TH1 and TH2 cells. The TH2 cells go and stimulate your B cells. So the interleukins which are, stim which are coming from your TH2 cells stimulate your B cells. And ultimately, these B cells, when they go and sit on the mast cells, it will cause degranulation. So, it can sit on the mast cells, it can cause sit on the basophils and it can cause degranulation. So, when it sits on the mast cell and it causes degranulation, there will be release of inflammatory mediators. And when there is release of inflammatory mediators, you will have symptoms. So whenever there is a degranulation of mast cells, there is release of inflammatory mediators and release of these inflammatory mediators would cause symptoms. So let me just draw it and summarize to you what we've discussed so far. So whenever you are exposed to an allergen, the allergen is taken up by the dendritic cells. From the dendritic cells, they are exposed or they are taken up by the T cells. The T cells now proliferate into two types, the TH1 cells and TH2 cells. This TH2 cells will go and stimulate your B cells. It can stimulate your B cells and this B cells will produce immunoglobulin. Now, when this immunoglobulin sits on the mast cells most often, it can sit on other cells like basophils as well. So, when this sits on the mast cells, what will happen? There will be degranulation. So, this mast cell has various inflammatory mediators within it. So, when the immunoglobulin comes and sits on the surface of the mast cells, it will cause degranulation. And when there is degranulation, there is release of inflammatory mediators. The release of inflammatory mediators are histamine, serotonin, leukotrienes and prostaglandins. So, the mediators that are released is histamine. leukotriene serotonin and prostaglandin so these are all mediators of inflammation and when these mediators of inflammation are released there will be an inflammatory process resulting in symptoms. So, all these inflammatory mediators would result in symptoms. Now, can allergy be only, you know, during specific period or can it be throughout the year? So, if the allergy is present throughout the year, we call it as perennial allergy. And if it is present only during a particular season, we call it as seasonal allergy. Now, this seasonal or perennial could occur because any of these causes. It could be because of inhalant exposure, like anything that you breathe, there are numerous molecules in the air. So, anything that we breathe, anything that we eat, and if there is a genetic predisposition, 
it can predispose to allergic rhinitis. So anything which is inhaled or ingested and if there is a genetic predisposition, it could result in allergic rhinitis. Now, if it occurs during a particular season, we call it as seasonal allergy and if it occurs throughout the year, then we call it as perennial allergy. Now, symptoms of allergy, be it seasonal, be it perennial, would be mostly the same. It would be nasal symptoms, ocular symptoms, skin symptoms or pulmonary symptoms. So, basically allergen can cause symptoms into any part of your body, but these are the four common sites where you could get symptoms. Now, assume if somebody has a nasal allergy, would they not have itching in the nose, sneezing in the from the nose, nasal block, watery nasal discharge? Yes. So, these are all symptoms of nasal allergy. If there is ocular allergy, ocular allergy, they will have itching in the eyes. So, they have a constant sensation of rubbing the eyes. They will be watering from the eyes. Now, if there is an allergy on the skin, it can cause itchy feeling on the skin. And if there is pulmonary allergy, there can be bronchospasm. So, the symptoms are more or less very common and which we see commonly in the community and there is nothing new. Now, typically the clinical features that we see in nasal allergy is paroxysmal sneezing. So, patient has episodes of sneezing, 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 sneezing along with that nasal obstruction, watery nasal discharge. They have itching in the nose, itching in the mouth, itching in the palate, itching in the pharynx, itching in the throat, itching in the ears, etc. So, these symptoms you would see in allergy. Now, what are the specific signs that are associated with your allergic rhinitis? So, not necessarily the patient should have nasal symptoms. He can have association ocular, pharyngeal, skin, pulmonary symptoms. So, when there are ocular signs, what would you see or what would you expect? What you would see would be redness in the eyes, congestion in the eyes, swelling of the lids. But the typical sign that is suggestive of allergy is an cobblestone appearance of the conjunctiva. So, this is something that is very specific. So, what is very specific? Cobblestone appearance of the conjunctiva. Along with that, you would see there are dark circles below the eye. So, these dark circles below the eye, they are called as allergic shiners. So, they would have dark circles below the eye and they are called as allergic shiners. So, there will be a cobblestone appearance of the conjunctiva and there will be dark circles below the eye and this, this sign is called as allergic shiners. So, these two is something that you could expect as an MCQ. The ocular signs. Now that you know ocular signs, what are the nasal signs that you could see in allergy? So, in nasal signs, because of constant watery nasal discharge, they have a constant habit of rubbing their nose like this. So, when they are rubbing their nose like this, it looks as though the patient is doing a salute. So, this sign is called as salute sign. So, constant rubbing of the nose is called as salute sign. Now, because of constant rubbing of the nose, there will be a dark line formed on the dorsum of the nose. This line that you see here on the dorsum of the nose, this line is called as Darius line. So, these are the two nasal signs that you need to know. Constant rubbing of the nose is called as salute sign and because of rubbing, there is a dark line that forms on the dorsum of the nose. This is called as Darius line. So, ocular signs is cobblestone appearance. There will be dark circles below the eye called as allergic shiners. There is constant rubbing of the nose called as the salute sign. And finally, there is a black line on the dorsum of the nose which is called as barrier line. Now that you have known the signs in the nose and the eye, what are the ear signs or otological signs? Now because there is nasal allergy, the ventilation to the eustachian tube gets affected. And when the ventilation to eustachian tube gets affected, can we have middle ear diseases? Yes, we can have middle ear diseases. The common middle ear disease that we see with allergy is serous otitis media, also called as 
non saturative otitis media so again in this neat pg 2022 examination an image like this was given and the diagnosis was asked for so if you see these air bubbles the presence of these air, air bubbles is diagnostic of serous otitis media so serous otitis media we can identify by these air bubbles so in the otological signs you would see serous otitis media with air bubbles with air fluid level sometimes the tympanic membrane may be retracted sometimes it may be bulging sometimes it may be thick it may be thin but the characteristic feature that you would see would be air bubbles and air fluid level so these are the otological signs so nasal ocular and otological now how would you evaluate a patient with allergy we know it is an ige mediated disease so first and foremost do you want to do the serum ige levels to identify whether it is elevated or not yes so serum ige levels are done and if this is elevated this would definitely be an evidence of allergy now whenever there is an allergy the eosinophil count also increases so if there is an increase in the eosinophil count again that is suggestive of allergy so peripheral eosinophilia or nasal smear showing eosinophils would suggest to you of allergy now ige levels eosinophil levels will only tell patient has allergy or not but will it tell you what is the patient allergic to will it tell you exact allergen what the patient is having allergy for it cannot so what tests will help you there are two tests one is called as skin prick test the second one is called as radioallergosorbent test